Will Cow and the Will Cow Majority. If you've got some time, I got. I just got to ask you about this uh, Patty Murray plan. Now, I know. I think we all know. You know, you know, Constitution. All bills for raising revenue originate in the House of Representatives. I mean, there's no law saying the Senate can't just offer up an idea. There's no law saying that the president can't offer up an idea. I can offer up an idea. Anybody can offer up an idea. That that that's fine. But we had a stimulus package. It did not produce uh, a drop in the unemployment rate. As a matter of fact, when the president took office, we had 7.8%. After the stimulus package, it spiked to 8.2%. After four plus years, it's receded to 7.7%. And they're all popping the champagne. But now Patty Murray's come out with a trillion dollars in new taxes, no actual spending cuts. Her plan, She even admits her plan doesn't rain in the deficit. The Republican caucus, and I I beat the hell out of John Boehner for a while on this, uh, but they gave the president $600 billion in new revenue. Now, instead of saying, we made an agreement, we got to work from here, he's saying, no, we need a new agreement. Well, I mean... In the this, same year, I might add. This is a proposal, and also remember that, you know, at least this is the first proposal we've seen out of the Senate in four years, you know, and we still have yet to see the, the, the president. This is the latest a president has ever... Uh, in modern time, given us a budget, um, so it shows exactly you know where their 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 uh, their reach is. But but Andrew, I, I think one of the things that people now understand is is that fiscal cliff wasn't uh, such a good deal. Everybody in America thought that only people making four hundred fifty thousand were going to see their taxes increase. Actually, what everybody saw is their taxes increase, and this was the president's doing. And so now what you're looking at is a scale almost double of what that tax rate was by what Patty Murray is offering. I think that is an egregious um, um, motion, and I think that American people are waking up, at least in my district, you know, very, very poor, one of the poorest districts in the country. They're well aware of what's happening here, and they're against any tax increases whatsoever now. You know what's funny is that you'd think that the House would be more dysfunctional in the Senate given the number of people, <laughs> the number of cats you have to herd in the House versus the number of cats you have to herd in the Senate. And the House has been very efficient at providing budgets. The Senate, not so much. And the Democrats have controlled the Senate since 2009. So I, I'm just, for the life of me, not understanding this. Well, you know, I think it goes back to a saying that Jack Kemp said, leadership is the ability not only to recognize problem, but to summon the wisdom and courage and determination to solve them before they become crises. What a perfect uh, comment in regards to the dictation of what the House has done, because we've shown the courage and leadership, and, and what you see is, is sticking your head in the sand in the Senate side. We don't want to touch it. We don't want to have the debate. We want to defy our Constitution. Um, we, we don't want to work on behalf of the American people, and I find that offensive. I'll give you another one for those kooky birds in their dorms. Um, it's also proof that the 17th Amendment did not make the Senate a more efficient place. <laughs> that, that, you know, this idea that, well, if we have, you know, 50 50 states appointing two people to a body. It's just going to, you're going to have all this crazy regionalism. Well, now they're all elected and you still have the same thing. Yeah. You, you know, and, and it's sad that you, you actually see Rand Paul actually trying to create a, a, a fever and, and, and put some fire under people in, in regards to protocol and, and the debate in which the Senate should be debating. And then you have other senators that pick at him saying, you know, how, how, how petty that was. Um, I, I actually went to support Rand Paul because it showed some gumption in re, in regards to actually instilling and forcing the debate to come out of the Senate. God, I mean, I'd like to give him a cattle prod. Well, I don't want to turn you against your Senate delegation, but I think it would be funny if people started showing up at McCain events in Angry Birds t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be funny if all of a sudden you have all these angry... What's with the Angry Birds? It's not a Hitchcock film. I mean... <laughs> It just Absolutely. you know, you you when you call people who have a legitimate constitutional objection to something that the federal government ought not be doing, and you just label them uh, kooky or goony birds. Uh, all right, I, they're telling me we're out of time. You got to go. That's your people telling my people. We'll see you when you're on TV next time, Andrew. It's always a pleasure, and thanks for all that you do. All right, Representative Paul Gozer, thanks for joining us. 